My name is Paula Dittmars. My date of birth is 12-24-55. I was born in Fayetteville, Arkansas. This interview is for the Prairie Grove Oral History Project, and we want to be sure that we have your permission for this interview. Sure. And tell me, who were your parents? My parents were Barney and Mary Lee Smith. And uh, tell me about your uh, family growing up as a child. Growing up, I was the only child, um, and I lived in Prairie Grove all my life. Started school in Prairie Grove, went all through, graduated high school. Um, I lived right where my mom still lives on the farm. She's she's 90 and still lives in the house that I grew up in, south of Prairie Grove. Okay, tell me about your uh, family's business and what jobs they had. The first job I remember my dad having, he worked for a bro two brothers, uh, Bill and Pep Campbell. And they had a garage and a filling station down where the um, post office is now, right in that area. And Daddy had a garage on one side with Pep Campbell, and then Bill ran the gas station on the other side. That's the first memory I have before I started school. Then, whenever I started school, he had worked in the garage there where... Um, the town center is now. And then later years, he had a garage in the back there where Daisy and Olive is, and Hubert Keene and Geneva Keene ran a parts store, and he did mechanic work in the back. And that was the last job I believe he had. Okay, and tell me about jobs that your mother held. She, um, before I was born, she worked at Campbell's Soup, and it was called Jerpies then. And, um, and then it, it was Campbell's Soup, but she worked there 12 years, I was born in 55, and uh, she didn't work after that until I was 13, and she went to work for the, the locker plant in Cane Hill, and it was owned by Gett and Juanita McClellan. And she worked down there a short time, and then she came back to Prairie Grove, I mean, did the same work for the Mobley family in Prairie Grove, and they were located on Main Street, down from where our best bank is now, well, yeah, the east. Um, and then she worked for them for 25 years where Razorback Pizza is now. Okay, tell me about your family routines at home. What were some of the things y'all did at home? I remember every Saturday night there would be people either at our house or we would go to their house. It was like three or four couple friends of my mom and dad's. And we would have, cook out or do something like that or celebrate a birthday, whatever. And they would come... I can remember some friends and mom and daddy that didn't have a TV, and they would come up and watch the fights and the wrestling and the ball games and stuff with my dad because because they didn't have a TV. And um, I remember having, you know, just, we either stayed at home or went to somebody else's house. And once in a while, we'd go out to eat, but very seldom. Okay, what chores and what work would you do around the house to help the family? Mama worked, my dad farmed, and I remember when I got in high school, I took supper almost every night. Not not every night, but a lot. And I just remember cleaning the house on Saturdays. And But actually, and then I remember, you know, we had cattle. Mom and Daddy had cattle. And I remember going down the field with them. And I remember them cutting hay. And I, actually, I probably didn't do as much as I should have. Um. <gasps> Tell me about your earliest memories of Prairie Grove, the downtown and the business area. What do you remember about Prairie Grove? I remember every Saturday we would take my grandmother, my dad's mom, downtown because neither one of my grandparents ever drove, and uh, grandmothers. And we would take her downtown and let her out and just let her prowl all over town and do the trades day thing, you know, put all the tickets in and all that and do a little shopping and come and pick her up. And because um, it, it was just different. It was so different then because people had time. Um, you know, I remember um, all the old men sitting on benches and along in front of Mock, um, Mock Clinic. I can remember old men sitting along there. and You'd stop and talk to them or they'd say something to you. But there was benches all along. And they liked to go into the Crescent and loaf. Frankie's grandpa loafed in there a lot, Jack Detmar's. And Neil's dry goods too. And uh, but my earliest memory, I guess, would be going to school. 
I went the first year in the old elementary there on Neal Street. I went first grade and then they built the elementary school that they just recently tore down. Tell me about going to school at Prairie Grove. What was it like in those days? Everybody knew everybody. No one was any better than anyone else. I was in a really good class, though, of kids. I mean, we were all just best friends. I mean, I had lunch with one of them today. I have lunch with one of them every Wednesday. I mean, you know, just close. And um, I don't know. It was good. I don't Who know. Who were some of your classmates that you remember? <laughs> um... Debbie Kenyon, Kathy uh, Brewster Hall, Jeff Feltner, Sheridan Allison, Connie uh, Connie Hodges Beal, Connie Davenport. Um, oh my gosh, uh, Roger Hulse, Phil Smith. Um, oh, I can't even think. Um, Sharon Nash, Darla Trout. Um, I can't even think of any more of them. But there, I think there was 56 in our class. I think that was right. In 1974. What about your teachers? Who were some of the teachers you remember? <laughs> um, I remember Wendell McEwen. Well, no, no. Back up. Whenever I started school, Mr. Vandiver was the superintendent. And Tommy Venters was a principal. And, and his daughter was a friend of mine, too, Vicki Venters. That's who I remember... That's who they was there when I started, and then um, I I can remember every one of my teachers. So, uh, tell me about some of the people in Prairie Grove, some of your neighbors and that you knew when you were growing up. When we lived up the road a little ways from here, up on the corner there, we had some neighbors who lived across the road. Their names were Ed and Audie Rich, and he sold real estate, and uh, and then. Let me think. Oh, Mac Murray's were on the other side of us, in between us and what's now Prairie Grove Health and Rehab. And she was my first friend, actually. Colleen McMurray was, because we lived neighbors. Oh, and Randall Reef was in my class, too. Um, he was one of my first friends. What are some of the stores you remember doing business with in Prairie Grove? We've talked about some, but tell me more. The Eat Shop. That was a a little restaurant that a man and woman ran, and Irene Davis worked in there. And um, it was there where Temple Skelton has her little shop now. And then um, I remember the B&K, which was Kenny Bartholomew and Hubert Keene started that. That's where Daisy Nolas is now. And I remember Guy Sparks had a grocery store on the street. It was the fairway, and of course the Crescent was there, and Neil's Dry Goods. Um, and then there was a, a hardware store that Frank West and George West ran along the street there too, probably about where Crawley's are now, maybe. And then there was the Cleaners, gosh, and of course the uh, Southern was always there. And then, of course, the bank. I remember going in the bank when I was a little girl. There was one door, and I remember Santa Claus always set out in front of the bank at Christmas, and that was Mamie Vincent's dad that played Santa Claus, I believe. But anyway, and then um, the flower shop, Charles Knowles, his wife had a flower shop, and then there was a locker, and then there was a parts store, too, along on the north side of the street. J.G. Ward had it, and then there was an odd and I play as Dr. Ward had an eye, what am I trying to say, eye clinic, and then there was the mock clinic. We always went to the mock clinic, but a lot of people went to the Elizabeth Hospital, but because Dr. Baggett was who we went to. That's about all I remember. And then there was a grocery store down behind where, let's see, what's there now? Oh, Extra Life uh, Carpet Cleaners. There was a grocery store in there. Abvaline's ran that. Ab, I can't remember her name. Uh, when you were a kid growing up in Prairie Grove, what would you and your friends do for fun? I remember going to the library, getting to ride your bicycle to the library. Um, we just played around. Either I'd go to a friend's house or they would come here and we would just, we played outside. And I know 
since I was the only child, you know, I really didn't have anybody. And I remember the neighbors across the street, their grand, great grand grandsons would come and spend the summer with them. And I played with them all summer long. We would play outside until dark, get up, you know, early and play till dark. Catch lightning bugs, spray water on each other, go out on the field on a picnic. You know, and I remember playing by myself for hours, just throwing the softball against the against the house or over the house, or and then we would go after I got older. We would go down to Carmen's drugstore or the Sterling. Sterling was there then, and get a Coke because say the fountain and everything. We'd hang out down there. Uh, tell about your work history here in Prairie Grove. I started working for Dillon's in 1975 and worked there till 1987. And then I went to work for what was Farmers and Merchants then. Jim Reef hired me. Talk about whenever you came to work for the bank. What, how'd that happen? Oh, my gosh. That was the best. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. They were so good to me. And it was just, I went to work at 8 o'clock, took two breaks, and got off at 3. It was great. I mean, and Jim Reef and Wilford Thompson and just a good bunch of people. And I knew so many people from the grocery store, too. So that helped. But it was a different time. We, you know, we had to file checks manually. We made our own statements. Um, it was. I think the bank went on computer system in 1977. So they were already, of course, on computer when I started. And I didn't do any of the hand posting or anything like that. Like, I know Jenny did some of that. They did that. that I ran proof and worked in bookkeeping and, and, and worked in the drive through um, what changes have you seen over the years at the bank? Oh my gosh, technology, of course. Technology and and just everything is automated. You know, um, we want people to come in the bank now, but then we give them everything not to come in the bank. ATMs, you know, direct deposit, debit cards, you know, everything like that. But I guess it's. When I went to work at the bank, we would close between three and four, and the lobby would be full. Close, close the drive through. I'm sorry, for an hour and balance. But the out, but the lobby didn't close. Yeah, yes, I'm wrong. It did close. But then they would be lined up all the way across the bank. I mean, people inside and all the way down the street. And it's not that way now. Uh, talk about the how the bank changed from. Farmers and Merchants, and then whenever Arvest came in and took over, what? Farmers and Merchants was a wonderful place to work, but after Arvest took over, we did, you know, as far as benefits, things like that, that was a plus, you know, and, and you could, more chances of advancement than there was Farmers and Merchants, but I can't say anything bad about Farmers and Merchants at all. Uh, what about Greg Reed? Didn't you? Didn't he? Did he work there when mm -hmm. you were oh, first yeah. started at the bank? No, Greg wasn't there whenever I first started. But he was at P Ridge, I think. And then he came down to First Prairie Grove. And then when First Prairie Grove consolidated with us, when we came, came our best, that's when he came. And I think that'd be about '92. I started working with him. I think that's right. Okay. Um. What, what else can you tell me about Prairie Grove? What are some other stories you have that you can think of? Or stories that people maybe have told you over the years? So now I'm blank. Um, I just, I remember my mom telling me about the railroad going through where Commercial Street is and behind the mill. And then I guess it went across and came out over on the Lincoln Mountain, Lincoln Hill. Um, of course, I, that was before me. But I remember when I was a kid, we would go down to what is the Washington County Milling Company now and get feed because Mom and Dad had cows and chickens and pigs and everything like that. And we'd go get feed. Atlas Cohe ran it then. I remember doing that. Um, I just, I, mostly everything, we did it at home. I mean, you know. There wasn't a water park. I remember going out to Lake Weddington. I do remember going out there. Uh, I played softball in the summers. So, I, you know, of course, of course, it's not like it is now. There was 13 of us on the team, and we played maybe five teams. You know, it's not, and that was the whole team in Prairie Grove. 
There um, wasn't every age group. What about the battlefield park? Would you ever mm-hmm. go out there when you were a yeah. kid? Yeah, I remember that. the first time I went to the clothesline fair. I was probably about four or five, and my aunt and great, my aunt and my great aunt and uncle took me, and I, I can just remember going. I can't remember a whole lot about it, but um, I remember we would walk up there because I had several friends that lived in town. Kathy, uh, Kathy Hall, I had another friend. Fern Kirkendall, and, and we would meet and walk up to the park and just hang out, you know, just swing and do things like that. I don't remember doing a whole lot of things. I remember having picnics and stuff up there. Okay. Um, what kind of changes have you seen over the years in Prairie Grove in recent years? Oh, all the building boom. All the houses. It's just amazing. Uh, the bypass going right through the middle of our farm. I mean, that's a big deal. So, I mean, you know, and things building up and like across the road here, they're putting in a housing, I mean, a, a duplex development, I guess you'd call, for f- folks 50 and over. And, you know, Willow Creek, I mean, all these places, my dad cut hay and I don't know how many of the subdivisions because my dad and his brother did custom hay baling. And they cut, I don't know how many of these uh, developments so they cut hay in, a lot of where uh, Shady Acres is, I always cut hay there. And where the school is, where the high school, you know, that's a big change. It's just all the building and the, and there's so many new people here, you know. And I used to think I knew everybody, I don't anymore. But that's okay. <laughs> if someone asks you, I know I keep doing that. Paula, tell me about your hometown of Prairie Grove. What would you tell them? That's a wonderful place to live. I can't imagine living anyplace else. I don't ever intend to. I've lived in three different places in Prairie Grove, and I've never lived anywhere else or been anywhere else. I'm kind of dull, but I can't imagine living anyplace else. I mean, my friends to me, you know, seeing them at the grocery store and hollering at you and knowing people, I just can't imagine ever giving that up. I don't intend to.